Good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're going to be painting a scene from Oviedo, Spain. I've already got the sketch down here on the paper, but I will put a uh, brief snapshot of the reference photo up here in the right side of your screen. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just some quick goals for the painting. It's going to be Mostly backlit, a little bit of light coming right to left in terms of how the shadows are going to be on the foreground here. But um, yeah, we'll work our way through it and we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to get a little water here and I've already sprayed my palette just to kind of get some of those watercolors starting to uh, get wet and release some of their pigment. And let's see, let me just kind of pull all that down. I'm going to spray our paper here. Looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and get our sky wash going. So for the sky, I'm going to keep this pretty pale. And I'm going to introduce some cool colors here. This is cobalt blue I'm pulling down from the top. Just trying to make a good kind of watery mixture. And you'll notice again, my palette's pretty dirty. And so it's going to kind of neutralize any of the colors I pull down. Let's go ahead and make a line and see how that looks. Ah. Maybe a little more neutral than I'd like, but again, this is going to be so pale you'll hardly even notice. Let's go ahead and just work our way down. Ah, that looks good. Just introducing a little bit more of that blue. And just working my way down the page. Pulling a little lavender. Mix things up. Perfect. This is always going to be well, in my opinion, one of the easier steps in watercolor. Oops, I don't know if that's a little bit of a brush hair got stuck there. Pull that off. This will always be your your first wash is just kind of putting down some of your your basic colors, but mostly everything is going to be so light. You can kind of have fun with this if you want. You can throw in some strange colors. Uh, we'll pull some yellow ochre and kind of warm things up on the building here. All right. Overall, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to come back here on the top in just a moment and do another stroke of pigment because I want to, in this area, it's going to be the top of the building. It's going to be in light. And so I'm only going to, I'm not going to come back and paint over it again. So if I want it to kind of hold some weight against the sky, I'm going to have to do it on this first wash. So I'm going to come back here in just a second. Let's just keep working through everything. Get some burnt sienna light, some cobalt blue. Just working our way through. All right, I'm gonna make this a little waterier just to keep it light through here. That looks good. All right, and uh, the ground's gonna be a little warmer, but I do want to try to keep it pretty neutral. I'm pulling cobalt again, and then this is cerulean blue here. This is a little cool, but that's okay. Pull some grays down. And you know what? Before it gets too dry up there, I'm going to brush in our roof. I'm going to pull, it's cool, I'm going to pull lavender, cobalt, a little gray. Let's just go right along the top there. That looks pretty good. And I may come back up and do that again because I think it's going to pull down from the sky a little bit too much. And I want that roof to be a little higher. So we'll let that dry just a little bit and we'll come back and take a look at it. Let's keep working our foreground. Again, I'm just kind of a coolish neutral color. I just want it to be a little bit darker than the sky. As we get closer to the bottom, we really want to darken things up. Again, try to keep it fairly neutral, but just start to add in that pigment. Pulling grays, pulling my blues, pulling my warm colors. Yep. And we'll just keep working our way down. All right, and you see how much that's lightened up up there? We're definitely going to. I'm going to hit that one more time. Yeah, there we go. That's getting much thicker. 
and that thick pigment may help me get that roof a little better. I just want to cool it off. All right, cool down. Let's give it another try. A little warmer than I would have liked, but that's okay. And again, it looks really dark, but it's going to dry so much lighter. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty good for our first wash here. Um, I'm going to let this dry and we'll come back. Just a couple of things to think about. When I come back and I get to working down here, I definitely want to make sure to negatively paint around these umbrellas and we're going to leave a lot of gaps and lights kind of along this, this border here between the foreground and the building. Sometimes if you try to paint all that stuff, it, it kind of looks, um, I don't know, sort of, sort of clunky to have the you have this dark shape perfectly meet this light shape and it goes all the way across it just doesn't look very natural but we'll talk more about that as we get into the painting so we'll be right back we're gonna let this dry all right welcome back so we've got our first wash completely dried here i gave it a couple of minutes and then finished it off with a hair dryer we've got this really nice hazy roof line here i really like the look of that and it's kind of bled down into our building here, and I did not touch that at all. Especially on your first wash, you really want to be kind of hands off. Let watercolor do what it wants to do. You can really ruin a painting quickly if you go in and try to fix things and, and start nitpicking everything. Just kind of sit back, relax, and, and let the paint do what it wants to do. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to spray the paper just to get a little bit of moisture on there. And we're going to start on this dome over here. In that reference photo, um, it was it was a pretty warm color. It was a, I don't know, kind of a an earthy tone. So I really want to keep this warm here. And then everything else through the building, I'm going to kind of try to neutralize. Uh, and I'll probably, just for contrast purposes, maybe put it a little on the cooler side. But we'll see, we'll see how that looks. So Anyways, I've picked up some burnt sienna light. I'm going back and forth between my, my cobalt and my cerulean here. Just trying to mix up something fairly thick. I'm going to go into my, my grays. That's just a warm and neutral gray from Daniel Smith. They're Joseph Sabuckfitch colors. All right, let's see. That's pretty dark. Fairly warm. I could probably warm that up a little bit more, but let's see. Huh. Looks pretty good. We are going to warm it up just a little bit more. All right. Yeah, that looks good. And let's just kind of work through here. I do my outline. And I'm going to try to move my brush quickly through the body. I want to leave little gaps of light. They could be reflections off the glinting sun, off of the little different pieces of this, this dome. I'm going to grab my smaller brush and pick up just some pure neutral gray tint here and do the top of that antenna. I really want it to kind of bleed into our dome. It just kind of gives a nice effect and staying dark, especially at the very height of the building helps contrast against the sky. All right, so we've got our dome done. Now coming down here, I immediately threw in some cooler colors and we're gonna start working into the body of our building here. So let's see. Now you see this roof line here? I kind of want to, I'm gonna do a quick stroke and see if we can get some little gaps of light in there. We didn't get as much as I was hoping for, but let's see here. I need to darken this up a little bit. I apologize if it's gotten a little bit, the lighting's gotten a little darker on screen. I paint by a window for natural light and the sun's kind of gone behind the clouds. So, all right, let's just keep working along. And again, I'm in the body of the building here. I want to make sure I'm leaving little gaps of light. And I'm going to come back and draw some little chimneys on the back side of this and create their shadows. I think it'll have a, it'll have a really nice effect. All right, so let's, let's cool this down here. It's kind of a green color at the moment, like an olive. Now something I like to do in the bodies of my buildings is don't be afraid to vary your color. Like just, you know, pick up some, I'll just pick some red up, I don't know, and just, just throw it in there. Don't be afraid to add a little bit of, a, you know, interest, experiment a little bit within the building itself. 
it can lead to a lot of the times because at the end of the day a building is just a it's just a dark shape a lot of times varying the color can sort of almost create a dimensional aspect to the building and that's very cool there I'm just gonna keep working my way down and I may pick up I feel like this brush is maybe a little bit too small I think I'm gonna grab a bigger brush here now off to the side here I I don't want the eye to focus a whole lot over here I want to keep our our central uh, interest point kind of here in the center and I, I want the edges to kind of bleed away so I'm just grabbing some clean water and just kind of pulling it into the shape so it kind of fades off the side there I want to try to avoid hard lines as much as I can especially when it's not around an area that I I want the viewer to be focused on and again I'm just working through the building here leaving a few gaps of light I'm actually having a trouble picking up as dark of tint or as dark of a tint as I would like but that's okay all right now we're getting down here we're getting closer to our subject now I want to have some pretty nice contrast between uh, the foreground our shapes here and these umbrellas so I'm gonna get darker in the building as we come down here to where I'm gonna actually be cutting out those uh, those umbrellas that you see so I want to pick up just some straight up just kind of that neutral gray color and you'll see it's it's pretty dark down there but what it'll do is it'll really accentuate the lightness of these of these umbrellas it'll really give the appearance of of bright light all right there we go i'm just trying to be careful to cut around those yeah that looks pretty good all right now i'm just making a couple of brush marks trying to finish off the edge of this building over here okay this looks pretty good so far i'm pretty happy with this i'm going to spray it just to keep it alive and I'm going to grab a brush. I want to add a little dark roof line here. And I'm going to just grab some pure tint. I'm just going to make a couple of marks here. And I want to do this. Actually, you know what? We're going to come all the way up to those peaks. I want to do this while the painting is still, still wet. So it'll kind of bleed down just a little bit. All right. What do I want to add over here? I definitely want to add a couple of things. I'm just trying to pick up, and this is a completely dry brush for the most part. Um, I really just want it to be almost complete pigment that's going into this building here. Let's cool it down a little bit. I want to maybe indicate some some windows or something there. Let's do three of them. Yeah, that looks nice. And, and you don't want to go crazy with windows. I'm going to come back and add some darker ones in here, probably in just a minute, but. I'm going to leave it alone for the time being. I say that, but yeah, I think it's a little too wet to go in there right now. So let's work down here. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put a line underneath the umbrellas just to make sure that those shapes are very, are very strong. Uh, it's very clear to the eye as to what they are. Now, when I get down in here, I want to be very careful around my cars. Those are also going to be negatively painted. The people I'm not so worried about if, if I cut in there. I'm not going to try to cut them out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of a warmer color here. And I'm just going to kind of make a couple of brush strokes here. And just I'm just kind of dancing around the paper a little bit. I'm going to cool it down. Just to vary things up a little bit. I'm going to come right underneath there. Yeah. Okay, and that's... It's looking pretty good. And what's going to happen is all these little specks of light and things, we're going to turn them into, if you've ever played the Scribble game growing up, it was a, it was a household favorite for my family. But <clears throat> the idea is that you draw a squiggle and then you know the person that you're playing with has to turn it into a picture. You go back and forth. It's a silly game, but it passes the time. And it's essentially what we're going to do here is I've just kind of made all these lines and there's cool and dark colors, but I'm going to come back and we're going to fill in and try to give the idea that there's something going on here. And 
I've got a little palette knife here and if you don't have one of these, it's not the first thing you think you need for watercolor, but it is useful for scratching out highlights and, and kind of through here, I don't like how how solid that pigment is. So I'm gonna come in there and just kind of maybe push some horizontal blocks and then I'll scratch out some vertical lines. These could be telephone poles or light posts or it could be the, the bases of those umbrellas. I'll scratch those in there and then Leave it alone for a minute. It's also great for scratching out windows here. I'll just do this as an example. I don't know if I'll regret that or not, but anyways. All right, that looks pretty good as a starting point. I'm going to work on these cars now because it is very important that I keep them, I guess, cut out um, in the way I want. I'll explain that in a second. So let's do this. Come in here. Let's get some dark pigment again. And let's work around these cars. So what I want is the back of the car will be here. But I also want the side of the car to, it'll give the impression that it's in light here if I leave this and I don't paint into that. So I'm going to paint just the back of the car and these, these tires here. I'm going to get a small brush. Come over here and pick up a kind of a red color. Forgive me, I don't actually remember the name of this pigment, but I'm going to put in a little tail light there, a little tail light there, and then we're going to build the back of this car. And I'm just going to pick up whatever, well, I was going to pick up the pigment we had, but I don't want it to blend too much into the background. I'm going to pick up some lavender, and we're just going to kind of do that come back here all your cars should get darker at the bottom I'm gonna pick up some gray here and just kind of come along the bottom and let it let it melt into the body of that car and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pull a line down those could be the the tires of the car I'm gonna connect kind of connect them like that that gives a pretty nice nice impression there I do need to though be careful because if I just left that line there, it'd look kind of look kind of funny. Um, I'm gonna wet the paper again. As long as your watercolor is wet, you can keep working on it. When things dry, it gets a little bit more difficult. So we'll do the same process here. We got a tail light, tail light, and I'm gonna make this one yellow. Maybe this is a or I say yellow, it's yellow ochre. Maybe it's a, a taxi or something. Okay, and pull that through. Just grab some darker pigment, right? As we get closer to the bottom, we're going to darken things up. And I'm going to pull some gray. Just work our way down here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to pull my tires in there. Yep. Connect them. All right, that's looking, that does not look too bad. Spray it just once more. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to kind of pull in some more, some more vertical lines in here. Yep. Something like that. And I am liking the way this is looking so far. This looks pretty nice. Um, hmm. What do we want to do next? I think some of these figures, what I'm debating right now is this is still wet. And so if I come in and start to build these figures, they're going to kind of bleed off. This guy is very close to us and I want him to be pretty strong. These two, I'm okay if they kind of blur a little bit with their background. So let's work on them and pick up some darker pigment. Uh, let's pick up just some cerulean and I'm just going to make a, make a blob in there. That'll be one person, and here will be another person, two people. And then while I've got this on my brush, it was a little too blue, but while I've got some dark pigment out here, I'm going to kind of dab the ground a little bit here and, and put some more just blots of paint down. And you'll, you'll see that <clears throat> this, is, this is really important. This is kind of a key to painting. All of this is abstract, but as soon as we got those cars painted in, 
it's almost like your mind starts to fill things in. If you can figure out a complex scene and just have a couple of key shapes and abstract the rest, it, it really simplifies things and it almost reads better than if you tried to illustrate every little thing. I'm just gonna, I'm just pulling the tires down a little bit on these cars, something like that. And I need to give them a shadow underneath. I'd mentioned in the beginning of the video that I think I want the sun to be coming from that kind of right to left area. So I'm just gonna pull this underneath and just leave just a glimmer of, of light underneath there. All right, so there were two figures we were working on over here. I just pulled some pure pigment. I'm gonna put some faces on them. Pull some of this. The only thing I don't like about them is they're almost the exact same color in terms of what they're wearing. Um, I don't ever like to draw the legs completely. I like to kind of dot along them. I don't know why, but I, I think it gives a better impression. For some reason, Legs always bother me in paintings, or I'm just, I say bother me. I don't think I'm very good at painting them. I'm going to come in here with a paper towel and kind of blot this figure a little bit. And I think we're going to give him or her, I don't really know, it's just a figure, a jacket. Kind of a dark color around what we just blotted out. I'm going to do the same thing here. and Just kind of, just, you know, a couple little legs. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, this figure I'm going to have very strong. These guys, well, they actually ended up pretty strong. They didn't really blend in too much with the background, so that looks good. Um, I think this is still wet. I forgot, but I do want just a couple of windows over here, so let's see. And We might have timed it just right. So much of watercolor is, is timing. One of my favorite artists, uh, Joseph Zabukvich, has what he calls a watercolor clock. Um, and if you ever get a chance to read one of his books or if you're truly lucky and you get to go to one of his demonstrations, I'm sure he'll talk about it. But anyways, it's just about <clears throat> how at different stages of wetness within your uh, work, how when you put pigment on the paper, what it basically what the effects are. And he's, he's very good at that. He's a master. He's been doing it for a long time. But anyways, I'm going to, <clears throat> I let this fade earlier. I want, I don't really like these hard lines here. I'm just going to put some water and then I'm going to take my paper towel and just kind of pull through a little bit just to, yeah, just to soften it up. And I'm going to soften a couple of things in here as well. Just to, again, kind of, kind of vary your scene here. That's really your key. Yeah, that didn't look too bad. Maybe pull, pull a line there. This is starting to look pretty good. Um, hmm. All right, let's do a little bit of roof work here. I'd mentioned that I wanted to put some chimneys. I love this effect when you've got this, these dark shapes on the back of a roof. So I'm going to just pull two lines like that. And then really just kind of grabbing what we've been working with, just some darker colors. Maybe something, I'll cool it up a little bit just because our, our roof is so cool, but I do want it to be pretty dark. That that contrast here on the roof, it just, it looked, wow, that is way too cool, unfortunately. Let's do that instead. Yeah, that looks good. But yeah, when you've got these, these, and I'll do one more here. I don't want to go crazy, but it, it really does create a cool effect on the roof, and I'll just pull that there. Yeah, that looks great. Um, hmm. Draw a couple little more things on the roof, just on the front side here. Some more antennas and, I don't know, could be anything. You always wanna put a little bit of decoration on your roof, so I'll put another window, another window here. And you see, you wanna do those windows, wow, this is so wet, so they can kind of bleed in a little bit, help soften everything up. Oops. And you know what? We got a really dark blot on one of our umbrellas. I wanted to keep that a little cleaner, but that's okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this dry completely, and I'm going to come back and do our last figures. We'll throw our shadows in, and uh, we'll be done. All right? 
All right, welcome back. It is just about time to finish this painting up. We've got everything nice and dry. I'm gonna add in our last figures, get some shadows here, and I think we're gonna be done. So let's start with our, our big figure over here. I'm gonna go straight in and just pull pure lavender out of that, uh, that little pail there. And same process as before. I'm gonna grab some pure dark pigment here for the lower half of this individual's body and just kind of, again, just, just indicate that they have legs, all right? Come in here and this is, again, this is burnt sienna light. It's a great color for doing figures and figures faces. And I maybe pulled that down just a little bit. I always like to pull it down a little bit into the figure, but that was a little bit much, okay? A little dark and maybe put a little some little hair on there okay that looks pretty good and for our last figures over here let's do another jacket since they've got some uh, kind of light area around their torso all right then we'll have this person kind of coming maybe straight at us yeah something like that Let's see, that looks pretty good. Same process there. You know what, let's put, it might be kind of fun if this person has a, a dog with them. We'll put a, a dog with them. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make a blob and put a tail and let's see if we can't make this look like a dog. I'm not a perfect sketcher by any means there's a head of some kind and yeah, I don't know that resembles a dog don't you think a leash maybe yeah okay looks pretty good now we've got some dark pigment I'm gonna just put in some vertical lines again these could be telephone poles I, I keep saying telephone poles they're not telephone poles they're light posts um, let's see here uh, I don't really like look of this person over here. I don't quite know why. I'm going to play with it a little bit. Pull the legs down. I guess that's better. Let's see, isn't the... Yeah, that's fine. And again, you don't have to be perfect. Um, add a hand or glove or something. You don't have to be perfect. Um, you don't want to. I mean, if you don't like what you see, fiddle with it a little bit, but don't go crazy. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna come in here. I've got some dark pigment just from everything we've been working on. We're gonna make a couple of shadows. And with shadows, a lot of times less is more. You don't wanna to go too, too much with them. You know, there we go. Just a couple of, just a couple of shadows. This guy's, I'll make a little bit bigger. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, hmm, what else to do? I'm gonna abstract a couple of more figures in the background. Right, it looks a little barren back there. So, just put a blob there, a blob there. Come in here, pull this dark paint out. Just pull the legs down a little bit. And yeah, there you go. Pull some paint. There's one, two, put three, four. Don't know. There's some people back in the shadows. And once I come and add some gouache highlights on these folks, it'll be uh, much, much more apparent. I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit of detail up here in our building. I do not want to add too much because again, the building is further away than the people. I don't want the sharpness to be quite the same. I'm just going to add maybe like. Let's do some darker areas at the tops of these of these windows here. And you can hardly notice it, but something like that. Maybe just do a, a little bit darker antenna there and then on the dome here. 
I may just pull across just a couple of extra lines. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think that's about all I'm going to do on that building. Yeah, all this looks pretty good. Okay. All right. I said that was going to be our last one, but I'm going to let this dry and we'll add our highlights in just a second. All right, here we are, time for highlights. This is all dried off. And if you don't have a hair dryer, I do recommend getting one for your watercolor art. It does help speed everything up. You can get them on Amazon for $20. You don't need anything fancy, but they do help. All right, I've got a little white titanium gouache here, and all I'm gonna do is just add some, some highlights onto our people, and you will be amazed if you do cityscapes or landscapes with figures this really has a substantial effect on making your kind of characters pop out it uh, it really has a nice effect I remember when I first started doing it I thought I'd become a professional artist overnight I just thought it was such a cool effect um, Let's see, that looks pretty good. Maybe a highlight on the top of this car. You don't want to go too wild with it. It is, it is sometimes hard not to just because it has such a striking, uh, just that contrast of everything that's so dark and coming in with a pure white. You know, as watercolor artists, we don't really use paint like that, so it can be kind of hard to control. But I think that looks pretty good. I don't want to overdo it. Is there anything else I can think of? I may add just a little highlight on this roof here. Maybe just that one, leave it alone. Maybe just one little line there. I don't like that. Let's blot that out. Oops. Ah, no big deal. Um, I think that's gonna be it. I think, I think we're done here. And if you're looking at your painting and it takes you more than five to ten seconds to find something else to do you're you're done don't sit here and, and keep working on it um, I will say though I ended up not liking that line either I'm gonna try to blot that out if I can but yeah it's fine all right so now's the fun part you've always got to sign your work and we'll review what could we have done better what do we like what do we not like it's always important to try to self-critique yourself. The more often you do that, and especially if you paint frequently, you'll remember what you critiqued last time and hopefully change it. And while I've got this red on my brush, I always like to add a, a tie or something. It's just kind of fun. Yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, so far pretty pleased with the painting. Let's get this tape off so we can see our final result. Things I don't like about it. Let's see. Things I don't like about it. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with this painting. This figure proportionally seems a little strange to me, and I'll, I'll maybe have to figure it out later why. I think the head's too big, but, I mean, I'm just kind of nitpicking. I'm honestly pretty pleased with this, um, with how this came out. I think things I could have done better. I would have liked to darken this dome a little bit more. I, I always like to have the tops of domes and towers be a little lighter than the body. I would have liked to have it be darker and kind of bleed into this shape. But again, I'm just, I'm nitpicking here. Um, things I do like, I really like the shadows on the roof. I think they look great. I think this abstract area reads fairly well, especially with the cars and these front figures kind of pulling the eye forward. All in all, very pleased with the painting. So. Anyways, I hope you learned something. If you stayed all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. Uh, please consider con subscribing and liking the video. It just helps get this out to more people and lets me know I should keep making more videos. So anyways, uh, thanks again and keep on painting.